giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the fun. fun. First updates now. FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. All right. Hello and welcome to the We the North recap. Today we'll be talking about pinning, recap the events that happened this past weekend, and give some previews for next week. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Dan. I'm Zoe. And I'm Tegan. So before moving on to our discussion, I actually have two quick things I want to say. First, hi, Mom, Dad, Ainsley. I know you're watching and that's a new thing, so hi. Um, now, we'll be giving away some fun logo mugs on this show thanks to FTC Team Redfish Robotics. So let's bring on producer Tyler to talk more about what it is and how you can win. Well, hopefully everybody's been around for a lot of the region recap shows, so you know the routine. But our friends at Redfish uh, Robotics have made these pretty awesome fun mugs. And they said, hey, let's give them away uh, on air for the region recap show. So we're giving them away on every single show. We have one of the giveaways there. And if you're interested in winning this pretty boss mug, all you have to do is make sure you click that follow button on the top of the page. Uh, and click in the and type in the keyword, which we're just going to keep at fun mug, which, you know, people who have already been watching for a while know that that's what you have to type in. And if you'd like to have five times luck, all you have to do is click the uh, subscribe button. You can do so for free through Twitch Prime or for just a few bucks a month. Not a bad deal either way. And you help support fun. So good luck in winning the mug and uh, enjoy the rest of the Weed and North show. All right. Well, thanks, Tyler. I'm going to send it over to Dan. He's going to introduce our discussion topic for today. And I was muted. I'm an idiot. All right. So <laughs> pinning, guys. Let's talk about pinning. <laughs> Listen, the Canadian just got into me and I don't, you know, you know how it goes. All right. So, uh, Tegan, you had some. And so oh, you, yes, you, you guys both have some great thoughts about pinnings. And let's oh. hear. OK, I'm going to start. It's a little bit of a rant. Georgian. Love the ref crew to death. I know they were trying their hardest. I know they're learning. It's like early in the season. But the pinning calls I've seen across all the events worldwide are far from consistent. So you're seeing, you know, it's hard with the vision, but you're seeing people starting pins late, calling them off too early, doing all sorts of weird, like calling them too long sorts of things, or the pin counts will be way too fast. So at Georgian, it was mostly an issue of, you know, starting too late, people didn't know when a pin was a pin. So dealing with that issue, um, obviously, again, love the ref crew to death. But it's just, it's hard, right? As a strategist to tell your team, like, oh, the pin might be called differently every match. And who's to yeah. say how it'll be called today? So definitely looking for consistency to start coming out of that uh, across Ontario. That's the so, thing so you where it's like you want, you want to be able to tell your drive team, like, exactly what will happen if you do this and with penny you just can't do that right it's mm -hmm. frustrating well i think in frc for a while we've had pins that aren't called for long enough like a team will back up for like two inches and then the rough automatically clears the pin and like we've seen it on einstein we've seen it on many big stages where it just hasn't been consistent and like the ruling on it is pretty clear but i don't know how enforceable it is because you're telling a ref an arbitrary distance of six feet. Like they can't put a tape measure out on the field, right? But two inches is not can't? six feet. <laughs> yeah. So I think the one thing too, so yes, I'm the strat mentor for 4476. And the one thing I tell our drivers is if you're pinning someone on the rocket, you can't back up to just the cargo ship. It's not too like, it's not six feet. So you either have to go back to your side of the field or you have to go all the way around the opponent's cargo ship, and one's going to have better vision than the other. Uh, and it also prevents the risk of maybe while someone else is scoring, you get a little bit of them crossing over and causing uh, some fouls that are not fun to deal with since fouls are worth so much in a low-scoring game. But, and I mean, I've been a ref. I've been there, and I know as much as anyone, like, your first pin count is terrifying, and I definitely know I made, a, like, a mess of it. 
But it's just, especially in eliminations, it can be like a make or break factor. I know for us, for example, in finals one, we lost and there were some foul counts and yeah, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have won the match, but it would have been within one point. And there were some fouls that were called on pinning and video replay isn't a thing. But if it was a thing, I know we'd definitely be looking at, was it called too early? Did we back off enough? Uh, et cetera. So I don't know. It's frustrating, but I understand it's also really hard because I've been like literally in that position. It's just, it, it kind of sucks. <laughs> well, to sort of bring up how inconsistent it's been. Um, so at Ryerson, I felt it was for the most part actually called very well. And the refs actually counted till teams separated by approximately six feet. Um, and teams are getting upset about it because they're like, hey, we stopped pinning. And for the longest while, a lot of refs have been calling it as, oh, you've backed up yay much. Oh, you're not pinning anymore. So teams are getting upset about it. So, I mean, I don't know where we go from this, uh, especially for like telling your drive team, um, hey, that's a pin uh, or like that's not a pin. Or do you go to like certain refs and be like, hey, that ref calls it like X. So you can get away with it if you do it on this side. But don't do it like this on that side because, you know, and I find like that's a little bizarre. Um, so kind of I don't know what first can do about it. Yeah. Like you, got, it's all about consistency. Like if you know a ref like waits five seconds before starting a pin count, then you got to take that into account when you're doing your strategy. I've seen that happen. Like wait there for five seconds and say, oh yeah, maybe now I should start pinning. And then just slowly one, two. And it's just like, well, that's 10 seconds waste or 10 seconds that defense robot has been pinning. They're like, I, have hey, a, the I have a strategy for you guys. Go to each ref before the uh, competition actually starts during practice and ask them to do a five count in front of you. And then you can time that out, and therefore you'll know which refs count. Bring a stopwatch. Right well, especially exactly. because they're going to rotate, right? The refs do five matches, and then they rotate. And then there's only, like, there's five matches per event, or five referees, sorry, per event. So you also have to, like, scout your referees before your match. <laughs> We'll get to the five matches per event. That's Great Northern later. Hey, we had 26 teams at Georgian, so I get that feeling. We had 30, and we felt it, so. I mean, don't hmm. look at me. This is regional country down here. What's a regional? <laughs> Sorry, what's a regional? We don't have those up it, here. It's like, a, it's like a district, but there are more teams, and it looks prettier to watch. I don't know if it looks prettier. Ontario does a pretty darn good. Like ours is the exact same as our regionals. I will give does credit. It look Ontario prettier does prettier well. if it's from Minnesota, though. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not from Minnesota, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna try defending them. But I'm just. No, you're saying, an honorary listen, Canadian today. I am an honorary like Canadian today. I am just a little bitter that you know Illinois was <laughs> trying to move to districts for years and just never went through. So I'm a little bit district envious, I guess, or district that's a, jealous. That's like next week's conversation. Why Ontario yeah. is the best district? <laughs> I think you. I'm not I even bet gonna, a nope. few people from Michigan wouldn't look on that too happily. Yeah, I think you just like made us lose like 30 viewers from Michigan with that statement. Like I don't, I haven't seen PJ comment in a while, so I think he's gone now. <laughs> he's just out of here. He would, he would never leave. He knows my dad's watching. He would never leave. <laughs> oh, All there right. we go. There's the whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So, so let's go on to our event recap. Uh, Dan, how about you tell us about North Dakota? Yeah. All right. So North Dakota, let's start out in the north, but not too north, just north enough. We have the great northern regional. No's great there. I don't see any great in Ontario district names. <coughs> uh, anyway, uh, no, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, no, it was a cool event in both a literal and figurative sense. The competition, uh, the weather was below freezing the entire time, which... Shout out to Team 8, uh, Paley Robotics from California, suffering through that cold weather when they're probably used to much sunnier times. Uh, they were a great fast hatch robot, and I'm excited to see what they do in California. But if we're giving shout outs to teams, 5172 Gators, what, what a team. They have, I've been a fan of them since 2016, and they have consistently impressed they just have they have an amazing robot this year. I love everything about it. And they were one of two teams able to complete the rocket and the quals for the Great Northern Regional, which was pretty impressive. The other team to be able to complete the rocket was 3750 Gator Robotics. Not to be confused with Gators 5172. This is a completely different team called Gator with Robotics, just to clarify. And while their hatch game is just okay, 
they score balls amazingly. I've not seen a faster ball score than 3750. If they have a rocket full of hatches, they can fill with balls in no time flat. And last year, 3750 was against 5172 in the finals. So it was Gator v. Gator. But this year, the Gators have they've joined forces, which should leave everyone terrified. If you hear that Gators have formed a team and are going against you, you would run. Right. And that's basically what happened. They steamrolled the competition. Now, there was there was some close matches. There were a couple of teams that came close. The closest was the third seed of 2502 Talon Robotics and 876 uh, Thunder Robotics. They did some great scoring, but the real MVP was 4239 and their defense. They killed it with defense. They in the semifinals, they the second alliance could not score. It was just impossible. 4239 was just destroying them. Warp Speed is 4239's name. So yeah, check them out in future regionals. They will stop any scorer from getting points. Uh, but unfortunately, it was just not enough to stop the Gator Alliance. So congrats to 5172 Gators, 3750 Gator Robotics, and 7048 Red River Rage for their victory. All right, let's move on now to Ryerson. All right, so Ryerson had some big names going in, uh, 5406, and of course the original Canadian team, Team 188. Uh, they were favorites going into the event. 5406 would comfortably seed first, losing just one qualification match with a ranking score of 2.91, picking the second team of 188, and they comfortably made it through the event, taking two matches each to move through each stage of eliminations. So there were a bunch of HAB3 climbers at the Ryerson event in 5406, 188, 1285, 746, and 5024, all of which ranked in the top seven. 49-39 um, spent all of Friday playing killer defense going to the opponent's side of the field, showing us how much defense matters in destination deep space, as much as Parth wished it didn't matter. They, they came out Saturday, though, and started scoring hatches really well after playing defense all of Friday, and they were picked up by the number two alliance captain of Team 1285. So there's actually a huge upset that happened in semifinals. So they were beaten by the number six alliance in semifinals of 68-78, 57-19, shout out to my friends over at Pink Titans, and 68-66, uh, the Space Invaders, who would make it to the finals to face the number one alliance. The number one alliance would comfortably win the finals, um, and that included Team 188, the original Canadian team, and they ended their banner drought, from 20, which is going on to 2016, with the Kling Bling, with also the Chairman's Award. So a huge shout out to them for being uh, winners of Ryerson. And the team we got to play with, actually, Team 7476. I just want to give them a huge shout out. These guys could put up eight game pieces on the rocket in a match undefended. And as a rookie team, they were really, really impressive and really fun to work with. So I'm really excited to actually see them at their next event, which is going to be the North Bay event in future years as well. Tegan, you were at Georgian. How about you tell us about Georgian? Oh, no, did her computer crash? She said that might happen. All right. I think we just covered it. Yeah, we yeah we talked about 74 or 76, was it? Yeah, they were good. They were scoring eight game pieces, you said? Yeah, 74, 76 scoring eight game pieces. There, we got taken back. Hi, sorry. My computer said right. blue screen again. All right, tell us back. about Georgia. <laughs> Those about Georgian? Okay, sorry about that. So finishing off this week's events, let's head on up to Georgian College. Going into the event, the top Canadian teams are Team 1325, Inverse Paradox, Team 1305, Ice Cubed, and Team 4476, The Waffles. We also had some visitors from the <clears throat> Lesser District of Michigan, comprising of Team 2771, Code Red Robotics, The Stray Dogs, uh, 3655 tractor technicians and a full dog park of 216, 244, and 288. More Robo Dogs, Robo Dogs 3D, and the Robo Dogs. So, Team 1305 had a strong grip on the first seed all event with their turreted elevator atop a solid climber, which reliably gave them that ranking point for the Hab climb. And for an event with only 26 teams, like I said, there were a lot of level 3 climbs to give them that run for their money, including 3655, 6336, the Jabberwockies. 4932, Cougar Robotics, and more. Even so, it was 1325 who went on to show their telly up play was worth more than a climb, even soloing a rocket once during this event, and that landed them solidly in the second seed. 4476, the other uh, contender, ended up 
all in, um, sorry, 4476 was in third place throughout the majority of qualifications, but a tough last, last two matches had us falling into the fifth seed. So, heading into eliminations, we see 1305 pair up with the Waffles to take on the 8th Alliance. As expected, that was kind of a, a little bit of a blowout. But the main thing that I think coming out of quarterfinals, that's really the thing to note, is Team 7757, the Atomic Dishwashers. Now, this is a rookie team, and I've seen them play some stellar defense this weekend. They were able to shut out the entire second alliance from scoring with just one robot. So that included 1325. That included 4903. It was incredible and while it wasn't enough to stop the second alliance it was definitely the closest i like it was the closest i think defense matchup that i saw throughout the event and i know i really wanted to pick them for our alliance and i was kind of upset that they went so early <laughs> so heading into semis we see standard um 1v4 and 2v3 one takes it two takes it and we head into the finals and here it was a lot closer than i think I expected it to be, and I know it made for some stress on my end. So in finals one, we see it come down to one point, excluding fouls. It goes in favor of the blue alliance. Finals two, it goes to the red alliance by one point. Going into finals three, it's the energy is intense, right? You've got um, 7081, the Kinetic Knights, is the third robot on the red alliance, and you've got team 7664, Big Celtic Six, another rookie team, doing the defense for the Blue Alliance. It was a lot of, you know, it was a little bit hectic. There was a lot of defense happening. And at the end of the day, it was the Red Alliance taking it two to one. And we've got some double cling bling action going on here as well. So you've got 4476 with the winner's medal and the EI. So congrats on that. And 1325 for their finalist. And a well-deserved Chairman's Award. They do some incredible work. If you haven't heard about it, you should definitely watch the video. Check it out. They are a team to, you know, follow, to watch for, and to, you know, want to be. <laughs> um, so both those teams have actually locked their ticket for district championships as well. The Chairman's for 1325 and 4476 is mathematically locked. So with that being said, I know my delay took up a little bit of time. So let's head straight to the Weed the North Top 10. All right, so for number one, we have uh, 5406 with their super fast tab three climber and their really cool um, scoring mechanism with the pass through and sort of the kick in the back, kind of like 148. We have 1305 with their turreted elevator, which um, I'm sure Tom Bottle Deary finds very wild. Um, 1325, uh, inverse paradox, just consistent year in and year out. I know they're moving schools this year, um, so it's actually pretty nice to see that they still kept. Uh, the same level of competition. Team 188, the original Canadian team, um, they had a bit of a soft showing in Durham in week one, uh, being eliminated in the quarterfinals, but they came back to Ryerson to win it all. And then Tiggins team, 44-76 at number five. Uh, Dan, you want to tell us about the Gators? Yeah. All right. So 51-72, I feel like they got a little bit snubbed, but they still come in at number six. They are amazing. I see a lot of good things happening from them in the future. 3750, Gator Robotics coming in close after. They're also just really high up there on the level of play. 234, getting uh, some Indiana inspiration in there. Um, Cyber Blue, always, always good to see. 2175, Minnesota team, the Fighting Calculators. And they're, they performed well, and I'm... Hoping to see more. Uh, and then 876, they were on the finalist alliance, Thunder Robotics, representing North Dakota. Glad we can get at least one North Dakotan in there as the number 10. All right, so we're going to address some questions from chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. So the first one we have is from It's Suspicio. So, hey, why did you pick 7476 being ranked number 25 um, as a first pick? So just a little more behind that, 74, 76. I mentioned it earlier, but they could put up eight game pieces in the rocket consistently undefended. And um, I don't know if you guys know much about the 5036 robot this year, but it can only score low hatches and it can only put cargo in the cargo ship. So the compatibility was really there. And um, just talking to that team before and working through playoffs, it was very evident that they knew what they were doing. So in or quarterfinals, um, the first quarterfinal, uh, there was a 
bad strategy, mostly on my part, that was played. Um, and then uh, 7476 actually brought up some key points about it. It's really nice to see a rookie team speaking up. And I was just really impressed with them. And I'm really excited to see what goes on with them. We have another question in chat. Tegan, do you want to take this one? Um, where would you put 188 on the top 25 list? On the top, or on the top, or it's the ten top list. ten list. So I've seen them play twice. I played with them at Durham, and I mean, their robot is solid. I didn't see the matches this week, right? I was busy competing, but definitely, you know, they were definitely the second best ro- robot at Ryerson. Not knowing how they did, I mean, I think that seems about right for them. I know 5172 got shafted for sure, so they definitely deserve to be higher. So that takes everyone down a notch. Um. Between them and us, I don't want to sound biased, so I'm not going to say anything. You know, I'll play the, I'll play the politician's role here, but they're definitely around where they deserve to be. Um, whether or not it's higher or lower, I don't know. I haven't seen them play much, but uh, they're definitely in the conversation. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, or I wouldn't, not say that. I don't know. They're they're around where they should be. All right, All right, so now we're going to move on to previews. Dan, you want to go ahead with uh, Tippecanoe? Uh, Tippecanoe. Uh, it's just going to be a lot of firepower that we see from Indiana that we haven't seen previously. It's going to be a pretty interesting event, but I want to hear about Waterloo. Yeah, let's move up to Canada. So uh, Waterloo. So this event is actually really exciting because we have some big-name Canadian teams competing. So we have 1241, 2056, and 4917, um, all of which were on Einstein together or Einstein last year. Some of the lesser known teams outside of the Canadian circles, um, Team 4976, they were actually on Premier Night with their turreted uh, cargo scoring mechanism. So I'm really, really excited to see that. And then Team 2609, who for the past few years has built really fast, simple cycling robots, and it'll be their first competition this year. So it'll be nice to see them. We will also see Team Dave uh, with their super quick cycling robot and their wicked fast arm. And they've already won an event with Team 1114. That was the Humber College event last week. So it's going to be really exciting uh, to see Team Dave compete again and just get better and better as the season goes on. I love their arm. I love that robot. Well, okay, one of our design students is on there now, and they're doing great. Now, um, over to Central Illinois Regional, we've got, uh, what is it? We've got 2481. The Rocketeers, and historically, they have Rock CIR. Roboteers, sorry. Rocketeers. This year, they have to have some competition with teams coming in from the North and South to compete. So you've got 323, Lights Out. You've got 2013, the Cybernomes, who were at uh, Georgian this weekend. They've brought out a Swerve module, which can play some pretty killer defense. And other than that, there's a bit of a wild card for who's going to be the first overall pick. I think it'll probably be 2481 and 323, but we should see how that one goes. All right. Before wrapping up, we have to draw a winner of the fun logo mug giveaway. Thanks again to Redfish Robotics for it. So, Tyler, who's our lucky winner? Yep, winner of this one. And don't forget, we got a couple more still coming. Um, For this one, it's going to be C. Sherman. Apparently, just all of our hosts are winning today, and that's just the way it is. So, congrats, uh, Colin, for winning. Ah, I forgot to enter. Dang it. You can't win during your own show. So, But you can win during the next one, Dan. Uh, so with that said, congrats. Uh, reach out to me with your mailing address, like all that fun stuff. And we got more mugs to give away. Uh, of course, coming up on Best of the West uh, as well. So stick around for even more. Yeah. All right. All right. So thank you to everyone who has watched. If you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about the show and that this is the place you go to for more FRC in your life. If you got a few bucks to share, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand. And we're just delighted to have you on board. On behalf of myself, Soeb, so is yes, I said that right, Tegan, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in, and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is Best of the West, and talk to you next week on We the North Recap. Bye. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.